That guy's a karate expert. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball, and would also like to welcome Lita Ford to the show, who you might remember last time she was on the show. Tried to light the couch on fire, and of course we spent quite a lot of money repairing it, as you can see. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Thanks, doing great. And you've got a new album out called Dangerous Curves, yeah. which I heard, and the video that we're going to play a little bit is definitely a heavier sound, wouldn't you say? Well, it's I think more so. street, I suppose, more street than last couple of albums that we did. Did you go out this one saying, I want this record to sound more street or a little bit heavier? Or? No, it just, you know, it just kind of came together. Just wrote with different people and um, really worked hard on a lot of different things, vocals and guitars, and just put it together and here it is, Larger Than Life. Was there any ways that you went at this album saying, well, last record we did this, and I don't want to do that this time, so let's do this way and differently. Not really. I mean, each album is different, and each time we write a different album, you're in a totally different frame of mind. So, you know, this one just came together completely different. We used a different producer, too, as well, used which helped. Tom Werman. Who's done? Motley, Motley Poison, everybody. Cheap Trick, uh, Ted Nugent. Is this your first time working with Tom? Yeah. Is there any ways, like that you go in that he does something that makes it a lot different than somebody else, that makes it sound different, or is there a feeling that's a little bit different in the studio when you're working with him? Or? Well, not necessarily. I mean, it, it, I think the producer, first of all, has to be the fifth member or the sixth member of the band. Or, and uh, I think having a great engineer is really a big part of it. Um, Eddie Delena, who engineered the record, is just brought the best out of everybody as far as guitars and drums and we spent a lot of time on the sounds so it gave it that da down dirty sound you know? well let's hear a little bit of the down dirty sound and see a little bit of the down dirty sound here is the video brand new from lita ford this is larger than life welcome back to the headbangers ball lita ford is our guest tonight and uh, a little bit earlier we played your video for larger than life anything you'd like to tell us about the video? Well, um, it was um, directed by Nigel Dick from Propaganda Films. Actually, he's, he did two videos for us. We did two back-to-back, -back, one for Larger Than Life, one for Shot of Poison. And um, the band members that are in it, it's funny, Lon Friend was just saying about T-Bone Caradonna and, and Jimmy DeGrasso, because they're in my band now. <laughs> Um, thanks to Mike Tramp, he helped me out and set me up. And uh, so people but they're are not in the video. Myron Grumbacher's in the video, and uh, did that? Jimmy Everybody... Tavis from Lost Boys is in the video. Now, how did you end up with Myron? Because I'm sure everybody knows about his talent and everything yeah. else. Well, Myron and I actually um, have been playing together for the last three albums, and um, he's we share the same accountants and. You know, we just, I don't know, actually. We just kind of hooked up together a few years back and have been working together ever since. And I also understand that he helped write some of the songs. That, that, like, this is, I know that in, in the past you've worked with people like Ozzy and Lemmy, but this was more written, like, in a band, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I really wanted to keep this album in, in the band, within the band. So uh, our guitarist, Joe Taylor, flew out from New Jersey <clears throat> He's been staying at the house, and David Ezrin, uh, Bob Ezrin's son, has been doing a lot of writing. And, uh, and then I did some writing with Jim Valance as well, who co-wrote uh, two tracks off the album. So it's really a band thing, and I, I think it's good. I think it's good to keep things within the band, because they wrote their asses off for this record, and they really feel like it's part of their album as well as mine. Right. We'll come back and talk to Lita in a little bit, but right now... It's time for tonight's Ball Buster competition. Here's a look at what happened last week in the battle. My Religion from McQueen Street beat out the Bullet Boys, Talk to Your Daughter, with 57% of the vote. Tonight, the Ball Buster champion McQueen Street is challenged by Alice Cooper's Loves a Loaded Gun. Now, this is what you do. You watch both videos, you call up and vote for your favorite. <laughs> the number to call is 1-900-370-0100. Each call costs only 50 cents. And here is the current Ball Buster champion, McQueen Street with My Religion. Briggy Rackman here. We will be back talking to Lita Ford in just a little bit. Now, being so close to Halloween, I thought I'd tell you a little vampire story. Anne Rice, who's the great author that wrote Interview with a Vampire and Vampire Lestat, well, she's having this big party in New Orleans on Halloween. And the guys in L.A. Guns are huge Anne Rice fans. And since they're 
album is called Hollywood Vampires. They're going to be presenting her with a gold record. And if she doesn't know that, I just spoiled a really big surprise for them. Here's the world premiere from L.A. Guns. Here is Some Lie for Love. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. Lita Ford is here. And just to bring up the past a little bit, back in the 70s, you were in a band called The Runaways. Yeah. Which I dug a real lot. With Joan Jett and Cherie Curry. Yeah. You ever talked to any of them ever? Do you ever talk to Joan? Or? No. Never talked to them? No. Now, that was a <laughs> while ago. And um, do you feel that being a woman rocker, that things have changed a little bit? I mean, do you get more respect now? or? Uh, well, I, I guess it's... Um all down to how you sort of portray yourself. You know, when you're first starting out, the Runaways were kind of a TNA band. You know, Cherie Curry used to wear corsets on stage, and, and I used to wear hot pants that didn't cover too much. So we weren't taken very seriously as the Runaways, but I think as time goes on, you know, and, and if you're a good enough musician that it holds up. Because there are a lot of girls out there that are trying to put bands together, and you always hear stories about, you know, they have a hard time getting respect. Yeah. Are there any tips that you'd like to give to the aspiring female musician? Well, I don't think it's just a woman thing. I mean, I think there's a lot of bands out there that don't have respect. You know, there's a, a lot of guys, ba guy bands out there that don't, don't really have a lot of respect either. But, um, you know, because of the glam thing, or maybe somebody wears too much makeup, or maybe somebody has on something that's a little risque, or, or whatever. But I think, you know, in time, the, the proof of their true talent does shine through. Think it's through. harder though for women? You know, uh, you know? It has its advantages, it has its disadvantages. We'll be back talking to Lita in a little bit. Now I know you're all sick of me saying, oh this band is a great band and I like this band and I'm, this is one of my favorite bands, but really this is one of my new favorite bands. And the reason because it crosses rock and punk and funk and everything and the fact that two of the members are from Suicidal Tendencies should have nothing to do with it. This is a debut from the Infectious Grooves, and it's kind of interesting. I think you'll dig it a lot. And also, they're on tour with Ozzy, so if you go to the Ozzy show, make sure you show up early to check out Infectious Grooves. This is Punk It Up. Next week, the Headbangers Ball is going to be coming to you from the Concrete Foundation, which was actually last week, but it'll be on the show next week. And you were there last week yeah. on the Artists panel. Yes. What happened? Because I didn't see it. Um, well, just, uh, there was a lot of people there. Let's see, who was there? Suicidal Tendencies, a couple of guys from Alice in Chains, um, of course, Lon Friend, myself, <laughs> Earl Slick, and, um, just had a lot of... Any great highlights? Um, no. No great highlights? Not really. Dweezil Zappa was, was pretty... Yeah. Pretty good, yeah. So now, on, back onto the new album, which is called Dangerous Curves. You've written, like we talked about earlier, you writing with a lot of different people. And you've written in the past with, I mean, some of the greatest. Like Lemmy wrote yeah. a song on two albums ago, right? Yeah. You wrote a song with Nikki Six. Right. And, I mean, is, is there any of those that's like one of your favorites to work with? Well, I, I, not really. I mean, they're all, they're all wonderful musicians and they're all wonderful songwriters. It's a great pleasure to be able to work with them. You know, but, but like I said, I mean, I've been around for... for, for a few years a years now and and you get to meet these people and you get to become friends with them and and uh, it's nice to be able to work with them you know and be able to share talents with somebody like that what was it like working with ozzy i'm just saying that because we're about to play close your uh, eyes forever oh you are yes. well i mean the first concert i ever went to was when i was 13 years old was was black sabbath at the long beach arena and uh i just black sabbath i worshiped the ground they walked on i mean they were they were awesome. They were awesome band. And uh, when the time came for me to actually sing a song with Ozzy Osbourne, it, you know, it was, it was basically a dream, a dream mm -hmm. come true. It was very exciting. Let's take a look at that video. Here is Lita Ford and Ozzy Osbourne with Close My Eyes Forever. <laughs> 